today we are talking about uh, speaker excursion and sensitivity so probably many of you have noticed that uh, now the trend uh, for speaker manufacturers is to create drivers which are smaller in size and they have greater excursion so that means that the cone can travel further out so that allows the speaker driver to put out more uh, volume, higher levels of output and uh, everyone is really happy about that. So first this started to happen at uh, lower end products uh, so that we can have uh, really tiny uh, boom boxes like a small PA system for our cell phones or computers so you can use at work those tiny boxes uh, that was like 15 years ago but now the trend has bled into high-end audio so a lot of uh, high-end manufacturers use drivers which are smaller in size and uh, and they they can the cones can uh, create a large cone movement so this is against uh, the original tendency to have higher sensitivity so it means that uh, the driver was of larger size larger diameter and uh, and the cone moved very little and with those tiny movements it produced uh, loud volumes so let's look at the physics behind it and and the facts and measurements and non-existing measurements as well uh, that what is the difference between these two uh, approaches and what are the strengths and the weaknesses of each so let's look at a typical uh, high excursion driver so this is a high excursion subwoofer and uh, they have like really uh, powerful big uh, magnetic structures and they are built so the cone can travel like uh, 40 millimeters or even longer so it means that, that the cone the membrane basically pushes out four centimeters like an inch and a half and then travels back that much so that's that's a pretty insane uh, cone movement so that's why you can see those videos where the speaker uh, the driver cone moves so much it almost wants to fall out from your sub or from your cabinet but it doesn't because it's built well uh, that approach is against the traditional high efficiency we have Altec 515s here it's, it's the B series and uh, and there to get the same volume uh, as, as, as this uh, high excursion driver you just only need to move a millimeter of the cone and let's see how, how does that function so here you see this is the cone and there is a, a, a magnetic structure here so this is the speaker magnet that, that surrounds the voice coil and, and this is the voice coil so that the voice coil is attached uh, to, to this shaft basically that connects it's called the former that connects to the membrane and the membrane is the thing that moves in and out and this is called here the surround so the surround makes sure that it's holding, held in place and this here is the spider that makes sure that that here the former is held in place so so you need two of these to make sure that uh, that that the cone can move in a linear piston like fashion and it and none of the ends wobbles and then here uh, this this is the voice coil so your amplifiers output runs through this coil and uh, because of the inductance of that that's what makes the driver cone move out because of the magnetic field generated opposes the magnetic field of the magnet of your uh, speaker i mean of your driver and the low excursion drivers there this structure travels tiny tiny bit so it means that this uh, structure stays within the magnetic gap the magnetic gap is this area that is created by your magnet structure so where the magnetic field is strong if the driver has to travel out much further 
like further out, then it partially leaves the magnetic gap. So there, it has it starts to have problem controlling the cone movement. And so that's why if you have like small, the smallest excursion possible, the better it is, because uh, it it has it sits in the optimal magnetic field, and the greater it has to travel. Uh, the greater that magnetic field changes and that will impact the sound quite a bit so what today's manufacturers do to combat it is that they make the magnetic structure bigger so you can often see drivers which employ two magnets so there's like one ferrite ring and then they add another ferrite ring to make it double the thickness so so the uh, voice coil can travel within that double thick uh, magnetic uh, field and it still stays in, in, a, in a reasonably good uh, area but however I would say even if they double that gap the problem is that the with the high excursion the driver travels more than double so so usually compared to a low efficiency driver it has to travel at least 10 times more and all they do is they, they double the magnetic gap instead of making it 10 times bigger it's just twice as big so i think now you can uh, start to grasp what the problem is and and and, and harry pearson who was basically a high-end audios apostle he said that when they asked him about uh, sound quality he said if you can see the cone move it's not high end and i think that this is still true today so when you see high excursion drivers if you can see the cone moving already then you are having problems and why is that maybe the manufacturer will tell you that uh, it, it's all right it can travel that much because uh, we increase the magnetic uh, fields width and and it it can afford to travel out but there are other problems so even if the electrical part is okay and and it can travel a little bit more but it's still going to run into problems uh, so we will return to that aspect so now let's just go into uh, the difference what you would see as a difference between a high efficiency speaker and a lower efficiency speaker so for high efficiency it's about 100 dB or more and low is typically in the 80s like 83 to 88 dB that, that's that's a lower efficiency and uh, and my short answer is that uh, uh, very high efficiency it, it allows uh, the, a greater dynamic range to be read from the same material from the same information that you have in your digital source or in your vinyl while a lower efficiency system from that same material expands like 12 to almost 20 db less resolution so that's how does that work uh, just show another uh, example here because for for that previous speaker i used as an example i couldn't find a sensitivity figure I just put between 83 to 90 because that's what I uh, think that it works at. From the same company I found another one and that's 90 dB efficient. So let's just split, uh, I mean just uh, face off the two against each other. A lower efficiency modern speaker versus a high efficiency uh, old traditional design and uh, we could use any speakers it doesn't matter which ones i put here that's why i don't mention their names because this is just a theoretical um, thing you can put any any speaker which have uh, such efficiencies here the important thing that there's 12 db sensitivity difference between the two so because of that uh, the dynamic range uh, is four times higher for this speaker and when you uh, mm, let's see what did i write it here i have no idea what i wanted to say with that but this is <laughs> where i uh, want to get to 
is that from the same information so you have your vinyl or your uh, or your CD or you are streaming and your source gives certain information to your amplifier your amplifier does its job and passes it on to the speaker so what sort of information can your speaker unpack from this uh, source information packet if you have a 102 dB efficient uh, speaker then that will give you a, a, I would say like a high resolution high dynamic resolution uh, output and I'm using now pictures because uh, it, it, it's more we, we can grasp it better and it's analogous to how and what would happen to the sound and uh, but with sound it depends on your equipment you are listening at so you listen at, at your iPhone and I put you uh, sound samples you won't be able to hear that and uh, but but if you view it on your computer skin you can see the difference between pictures that's why I consistently use pictures and also because Harry Pearson who was the father of high-end audio who coined the terms we use to describe sounds in, in as audiophiles he used uh, pictures and photography as a basis to to create all his images so resolution he took from uh, the pictures and photographs resolution so that's what I'm using here for dynamic resolution you get four times greater dynamic resolution from a 102 dB efficient speaker compared to a 90 dB efficient speaker so as you can see here you can see on both of those pictures you can you can identify what sort of uh, bug this is but with greater dynamic resolution you can see the the facets of the eye you can see all those tiny bristles you can see the graininess of of the sand here and there like you cannot see the graininess anymore you cannot see the facets so there's a lot lost so what's our answer to that Wow, it's very easy. Today we have really high power amps. Just let's give four times greater power. And then everything will be all right. Uh, we will magnify our bug to the same size as this uh, higher efficient speaker does. And everyone will be happy. However, the problem is that you still have the same information content that your speaker can resolve from that source material so so the source is the same we are not amplifying the source and we are just amplifying the output power and because of that you have the same resolution you have here is just blown up more so you still cannot see the graininess you still can't see the eye facets it just looks bigger so that's why when you listen to high efficiency speakers versus low efficiency and they are playing at the same volume there's a really big difference on how you perceive the sound so so with the high efficiency speaker it, it sounds as if you are at a live event and the lower efficiency always sounds in comparison as if it's a recording it's a more controlled uh, form of expression but it doesn't sound, near, sound nearly as live as a high efficiency and it's because these speakers cannot uh, resolve the information content of your source material as much and uh, this has another issue uh, which is a double-edged sword is that uh, not only dynamic contrasts are resolved better with higher efficiency but also equipment problems so in the audiophile community everyone is aware that dynamic contrasts are better with higher efficiency speaker but almost no one is aware that this also works just not that your uh, source material can be heard more but also your source equipment can be heard more so if you have problems with your amplification problems with your interconnects you will hear it much better with a high efficiency speaker so that's why there are some people who who believe that uh, you cannot hear difference between uh, speaker cables interconnects uh, equipment damping uh, feet and stuff like that 
and tweaks because they use lower efficiency speakers and, and those will not show those small changes. So when you, when you tweak something little, it doesn't appear because the speaker does not have the resolving power to show you the details. But when you have high efficiency speakers, even the smallest thing you change, it will show you a lot of details. So, so this is an aspect of efficiency that's best described with a Depeche Mode song, uh, some lyrics from uh, one of their songs. You can run, but you cannot hide. So that's what high efficiency speakers do, is that you cannot hide anymore. If you have problems with your amplifier, with your equipment, they are going to reveal it for you. So that's why for amp manufacturers, this is my message. Is you re if you really want to show your weakness and strength of uh, and test the weaknesses of your uh, products, then hook them up to high efficiency speakers. And when you hear them on a, on an Altex system, then do not blame the Altex system. Oh, this is really color. This is an ancient design. It sucks. It no, it reveals what are the problems with your amps. So just be very <laughs> conscious about it. And, and if you are a good uh, equipment designer, then you are well aware that uh, with high efficiency systems, uh, horns can be balanced. Horn balance is really critical. Crossover quality is really critical. And, and if you know your, uh, your field, you know how to build speakers, you know how to put together a good high efficiency speaker and you know what it does to the sound and how it behaves and how much sound it lets through. So use a high efficiency speaker that, that you know how it's built, preferably you built it, and then test your amplifier on that. And then it will show minute things, minute problems, especially when you play your amplifier at a loud level that you will hear what are the problems with it. Because if you use low efficiency speaker, even if you use a loud level, your, your, your amplifier will still play at the higher output power. And you, you will never experience what your amp does to really small, fine signal details. So, let's see. So how did uh, uh, low efficiency come to exist? because uh, as we saw in the picture be before there was a gentleman with a western electric horn and the horn was bigger than he was so so yep that that explains why uh, uh why low efficiency speakers came to exist because of the smaller size so we can <laughs> fit them through our doors right and also because the controlled bandwidth so if the size is smaller uh what here there's a very famous speaker, the RS35A, uh, which is a BBC monitor speaker. It was developed by Rogers for BBC and, and they spent a hundred thousand pounds on the development of these speakers. And uh, most of that development process was the development of the crossover. So what they did is basically they built in a, a very delicate EQ into, into the box and that's the crossover so that it uh, it cuts off the efficiency at the higher frequencies so everything is brought down to the level where, where the where the base unit lower frequencies are put out so so basically they have controlled the bandwidth and thus they could achieve a really small size and very very high consistency so that's why this speaker was used as a, as a mobile uh, unit so that when uh, they went out to record live events and they could pull up with a small van and, and, and right away they, they, they could uh, uh, set the recording parameters uh, in, in a small van next to the big concert so to make sure that when they broadcast the event then, or record it then everything is perfect. Uh, so that's 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 the pros and and also there are cons with the low efficiency and one is that uh, these tiny drivers especially the, uh, because of the size and efficiency 
they cannot couple to the air as good as the big brothers with high efficiency. So this means that when you are playing loud, there are not big issues that, that are really apparent, but as you want to crank up the volume higher, then distortion uh, rises really sharply with, with the volume, with the speaker level and you run out of excursion really fast. So that's why today's modern speakers are li like the LS35A, but the drivers have much longer excursion to prevent that from happening. And let's see how this <laughs> really works out. Here's an example of daddy and, and son. So he's throwing his son out of the pool. Kid enjoys it tremendously. But the point behind this is that Let's imagine that the daddy is the high efficiency big speaker driver, like a 515C Altec driver, and the kid is like a 6 inch uh, mid bass coupler, a modern uh, focal driver. And, and to have the same output level, uh, this big speaker, this big driver has to use only a tiny bit, like a fraction of a millimeter. So it's like the dad, if he wants to make a certain ripple in the pool, all he needs to do is just squat down and then come up and, and, and he will create the ripple. If the kid wants to achieve the same size ripple as the daddy does with squatting, the daddy needs to pick the kid up and throw the kid to, <laughs> uh, to the other side of the pool. Because if the kid starts like uh, squatting down, the waves created are just nothing. So the kid needs to be shoved, basically. <laughs> uh, and that's what's happening uh, with our modern drivers too, is that they have to work their uh, they mules or, and donkeys and other uh, four-legged uh, equine uh, creatures off to achieve the same SPL as a high-efficiency speaker is doing. So what's uh, the drawback of that? Uh, I deliberately put uh, <laughs> this man machine here because this shows the process that we are going from a natural way of creating sound to an artificial way of creating sound. And this artificial way of creating sound is like Mr. Vader. Very powerful, very high-tech, seems invincible, but he's not a man anymore. He's more machine than man. And that's how you will perceive the sound created by these high excursion drivers. They will sound very powerful, but they will be artificial and fake. And, and the reason behind that is that uh, when, when, when you see like the big man, he's just squatting down in, in the water, he's staying in the water the whole time. So he's coupling to the medium that he is affecting extremely well. And, uh, and, and it does, his momentum is very controlled and, and the kid, it has to be thrown out of the water. And that is equivalent to the same thing as, as a high excursion driver loses its coupling efficiency to the air and it needs like a really high pressurization within the cabinet. And, 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 and the differential between that highly pressurized back air and, and the low pressure of your uh, room is like the difference between uh, the, the pressures between uh, water and the air above. So it's, it's, it's a perfect analogy to show uh, how speakers drive like a father tossing the sun out of water. So, so there's a big transition. And, and also uh, the, the, the high excursion speaker has to, has to move out much further and with a much higher energy to, to create the same SPL. And that's the difference uh, that uh, can be really well shown with the, uh, an example of like pushing a car. Imagine your car broke down and you have to push it. And now you are a very big guy and you just push the car, it moves away. But, and that's like a, like a high efficiency 15 inch driver. But if you have a 6 inch mid bass coupler, that then, then it's, it's like a tiny a fist instead of the big palm pushing the car. And instead of pushing it, you are punching it. So instead of moving the car, you will end up denting your car. And that's what the high excursion drivers do. So even though it's called a mid-bass coupler or a subwoofer, 
the diameter of this driver unit is just a fraction of the of the size of this uh, of the sound waves frequency length uh, that it needs to create so it's not creating a, a, a waveform but it's punching it into your air it creates a pressure wave and and uh, when you create a pressure wave it is like punching your car so there will be a lot of turbulence around it and 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 a lot of high frequency artifacts that correspond to the diameter of your driver's size and of course the the size for example for a, a 20 hertz wave is on the order of uh, 16 17 meters and and even your Altec 15 inch driver is very far away from that but but it's uh, much closer than your 16 driver and uh, but but if you want to play it like with as much excursion as your 6 inch it's still going to create a lot of pressure mode problems but your problems will be in the frequency that corresponds to the diameter of your 15 inch driver which will be in the range of 500 hertz and when you have a 16 inch driver it will be in the kilohertz range and uh, and then kilohertz to 2 kilohertz range for the small uh, mid bass coupler and the problem with that is that when it's in the kilohertz range it really affects uh, the most critical part of your uh, auditory system of the spectrum where your brain gets most of its uh, spatial in, uh, information a lot of its tonal information so that's why high excursion drivers are impacting the tonality and and the speciality uh, much bigger than low excursion so now we've been listening to this for quite a long time so thank you for listening and we will continue with the specifics and we will look into the physics of the excursion and uh, the power requirements and uh, you have already seen a lot of things about it and if you are engineers you already know how much more power you need if you have a lower efficiency driver but now I'm going to bring up another issue that I, I guarantee with almost 100% uh, uh, <laughs> that uh, even uh, good engineers never thought about this but please check out my next video because it will show you something that will explain a lot to all of you why there are thousand watts amplifiers around driving uh, speakers in, in in the low 90 db efficiencies why have become the new fad and the new popularity and it also will say you really explain why that's needed why a thousand watt is needed to 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 drive a 90 db speaker to create the same effect as a 20 watt amp creates with a high efficiency speaker so again thank you for listening please like and subscribe and we will return shortly